Hi, my name is Matt Drawl and I'm a private pilot and I got my license in 1986 and uh, quickly realized that the Cessna 172 I was flying didn't have enough performance for me so I decided to look into building my own uh, airplane called an RV4 which is this plane right here and um, started that construction in like I said 1988 and a few years later I realized I was working on the instrument panel and realized that there wasn't a fuel flow gauge that satisfied me and so I set out to design my own which is this guy here called the fuel scan that I designed and marketed under the name metronics.com and uh, quickly I realized I needed a faceplate for it which is this and I went out to some local uh, CNC milling houses and had some prototypes built but it was horrendously expensive and the process took a long time so I decided to get my own milling machine and do a lot of prototy prototyping on my own which is basically what this faceplate here is this is the fuel scan hardware and there's the CPU board and the uh, power supply board and the display board here with the LEDs and LCD and the push buttons and then the uh, <clears throat> faceplate here you can see is hollowed out in the back and uh, fits right over the top of that like that LED show through, LCD here, push buttons there, and then all of that goes into this enclosure here, much like that. And then that fits right inside the instrument panel, just like that with four screws, and you're good to go. So um, that was uh, about 1994 that I started that process, and a couple years later I finished it and began marketing the product and been selling them ever since. And... Um, so then let's take a look at the milling machine itself over here. This is a Jet 830's manual milling machine that I bought in the mid-90s and did the conversion to retrofit for CNC, which included building these motor mounts for these stepper motors on the X and the Y and the Z axis, connected it to a, um, at the time, popular um, CNC controller, and was able to machine these parts starting with a solid block of aluminum like this and then it milled out the front side out of that same block and then it milled out the back side like that and then uh, the last thing it did was cuts the complete part out and I did a lot of prototyping with it to get me to this final part that fits perfectly which saved it a lot of money because going back to a CNC company to get them to change one little thing here and there ends up costing a lot of money so you know, ultimately saved a ton of money and I have a nice, nice milling machine to do other work with so the uh, in the 90s there was a controller company that was pretty popular which I used and it worked fine but their they the card they used became incompatible with PCs modern day PCs and so I had to basically it went obsolete and was it wasn't able to use it anymore and um, the machine just sat for about 25 years and uh, about that time uh, I found Build Botics and they made a new controller that uh, didn't require a PC card interface and just connects over the Ethernet just fine and hooked it up was able to modify the existing stepper motors and uh, plug it right into the Build Botics box and I also at the time added this new knee axis to it, the fourth axis, which is really nice because it brings this whole knee up and down, which I had to do manually before. So I'm looking forward to the new added functionality of automated knee axis with the Buildbotics. And the Buildbotics has worked out great. It works really well. It's real fast and uh, software is easy to use and it's very easy to configure. It didn't take very long at all to get the stepper motors converted over from the old configuration to the new build botics configuration and so I'm looking forward to milling some new parts with it. The uh, build botics controller supports limit switches on all four axes and I've incorporated those into my milling machine here for the z-axis with these standard uh, little limit switches and then uh, down here on the x-axis these are actually magnetic reed switch uh, limit switches and this is on the x-axis and then the y-axis are here's one right there and there's one farther back and then the a-axis for the knee is down there and there for the limit switches and they work fantastic and the 
neat thing about them is it lets you home the machine on all four axes with the push of a single button, which is really, really nice and works out really well, really well, because you always know where your machine is that way. Since stepper motors don't provide uh, positional feedback and I wanted to make sure I knew where the machine was, I added these linear scales up here. This is just the readout box and it provides X, Y, and Z. And then this is for the uh, knee axis, the A axis. Uh, but to incorporate this positional information, you have to put actually a linear scale on each of the axes. And so that required me to add these additional units here and here and then underneath here for the Y axis. And then the knee axis is another unit on that side over there. It's the linear scale for the knee axis. And it has a little cable that attaches in here, connects up to the meter up above. The uh, Build Botics controller also supports these uh, AC Tech VFD units to control the spindle motor speed and direction. And it uh, allows me to select anywhere from one, uh, 1 RPM up to about 4,000 RPM through this box here, which has a RS-485 connection to the Build Botics box and a digital uh, data connection to here to do the control of the speed and the um, originally the Jet 30 mil had a standard single phase uh, motor on the back and you adjusted the speed through the belt up here but that's not very practical for CNC work so I replaced it with a three phase motor that is then allows me to fully control it with the VFD con uh, controller here and uh, so I can do tapping with it with a real slow speed in and then stop it and then back it back out again and it allows me to select any speed I want to so I don't have to ever mess with the belts up here which is pretty nice. Buildbotics really incorporated nicely with the AC Tech over the 485. The Buildbotics controller also comes with these pre-connectorized cables for your uh, stepper motors as well as a connector for the power supply and they're pretty easy to wire up you just connect them up to here to the motors like this and then plug it right in the back of the box and you're good to go. And uh, there's also a DB25 connector with a breakout box for hooking up limit switches and the VFD and other I.O. devices you might have. Additionally, uh, you can purchase this little webcam with it and it plugs right in the back in a USB port here and then you can set it up on a tripod to basically watch your machining operations from afar. The application actually has a little web window that you can look at and uh, keep an eye on your progress from the internet, which is pretty pretty cool. Additionally, the BuildBox comes with this gamepad controller here that lets you uh, exercise all the axes. There's the x-axis, the y-axis, and then the z-axis and as well as the knee axis, you can do it all from the gamepad, which is nice because it lets you set up an exacting position for yourself exactly where you want it to be. And then from the controller, you can say, okay, that's what I want zero to be. So it works really well. I'm very pleased with that functionality. It's been very helpful. One of the beauties of the BuildBotics uh, controller is that you don't need a dedicated PC for it. All you need is a web browser and a network connection via Ethernet to the box. And uh, there's lots of things you can do right from this controller. Uh, here, this is the main control page. Uh, it shows you here the limit switch um, values currently. And then this is the breakout box with all the wiring on it. As you can get to the help menu here, it has all the manual pages for the box, how to hook it up, how to wire it, how to use it. It's all dedicated right there. And uh, so from the controller here, we can um, we could jog with these buttons here. We can make the machine go in any axis we want. We can home the home the axis here. And um, under the motors, motor zero is the X axis. And then we can do all of our settings right from this web page. Motor one is the Y axis. We can set everything here. Motor two is the Z axis. And then motor three is the knee, in my case, or the A axis. And you can uh, 
download new firmware right over the internet here th through this interface and it works very slickly. I've d upgraded a couple of times and it's just a button click and it works. No, no fuss, no muss. And um, so again, it's really nice because you don't have to have a dedicated PC for it. Literally, you could do it from your phone if you wanted to. You can control your machine. You could watch the video from the from your phone. You can load up a CNC file and and run it right from your phone uh, over the internet. You wouldn't don't even have to be local. You could this my box is on the internet, so you could I can get to it from wherever I happen to be to check on the status of a long operation, for example. So it's really cool. I really do like it. It's been a substantial upgrade from my previous uh, foray into uh, CNC machining. So my hat's off to the Buildbotics boys for really bringing it with a fantastic product. During the 25-year uh, uh, hiatus of using my CNC machine, I uh, started and finished a, an RV-8 airplane kit as well and uh, test flew that in 2010 and been flying it ever since. So now I've got about 400 hours on the RV-8 and with the successful conversion of my Jet A30mm to the Buildbotic CNC controller, I can finally get back to the RV-4 project and get that off the ground. Uh, if you're interested in doing a CNC conversion of your own, I highly recommend the Buildbotic controller and if you have any questions on your conversion, feel free to email me at the address at the end of this video. I'd like to thank you for watching this video and have a nice day.